Night Health continues. We're going to talk about the vagina. We're going to talk about private parts. And we're going to be speaking with Chacha Sun from Damiba uh, Products. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, speaking with us, Chacha. How are you today? I'm great, Mark. Thank you so much for having me on. My pleasure. I am I'm really curious. Why do you think we don't like to talk about the vagina? Why, you know, you can, you can say penis, but it's somehow difficult for people to talk about the vagina. It really is, and we encounter this quite a bit. You know, we've even been banned by Facebook for using the word vagina, and we still <laughs> get routinely banned. And um, there have been studies shown that essentially, you know, women are much more willing to talk about their partner's erectile dysfunction than their own vaginal dryness. And uh, I think what it really has to do with is that we have huge taboos in society around uh, aging, especially for women. And so, you know, aging as related to, you know, our vaginal tracts is just something we don't even think about until, you know, sometimes it's uh, a little bit late. (laughs) Right. And aging, even for men is not necessarily fun. Erectile dysfunction is one, snoring for guys because we developed that big girth in the middle. Uh, But those are a lot easier to talk about than vaginal dryness or problems uh, with uh, the vagina in terms of sexual uh, uh, sex as well as just plain comfort. For sure, and you know, it's also uh, it's also the disconnect between what the reality of it is, being that essentially most women will have vaginal dryness after menopause, and the you know the suppression in terms of the taboo. And so, very few women are willing to talk about vaginal dryness, uh, you know, in an open manner. And uh, and we just we just have we have a, a ways to go as a society where we can start to both educate women on what it means to have vaginal dryness and the long-term effects, as well as encourage women to do something about it. I I spoke to a friend of mine. We were, were, you know, just two guys chatting, and he was explaining to me that his wife had several bouts of cancer. And because of that, she experiences vaginal dryness. And I... I was remiss in, in, in because I know about your products. I wanted to say, give her this, and <laughs> because they don't have sex anymore, and they've been married for over thirty years. I find that I find that sad for both her and him. Would you care to comment on that? Yeah, and it's very common because um, if you you know if you think about it, for women, it's you know a self preservation technique. We don't want to be, you know, undertaking any behaviors that hurt us. Uh, and, you know, the suppression and the taboos around talking about these issues has led to a real dearth of products on the market. And, uh, you know, and that's really what you know, motivated me to get into the game in terms of creating uh, all-natural products. And I'm always constantly amazed that there aren't products like ours, uh, similar to ours on the market. And especially for women who have had breast cancer or other types of cancer, you can't use a, something with hormones, and so there, you can't use something with chemicals. So there aren't that many alternatives uh, you know, on the market for this. And, and it is really sad because it's something that, you know, intimacy is something that's you know, very uh, natural for us and that we want to engage in as women. But I think if you were to tell us when we, when we were younger as women and say, okay, you know, you'll be able to, you know, lead a healthy uh, sex life until you're about 52, I think that, you know, I think that, would, uh, you know, that would have shocked us when we were younger. And it's something which we, we don't embrace as older women. As somebody, and, as somebody who, who remembers the term don't trust anybody over 30, I now say I don't trust anybody under 40, but (laughs) the fact is that we are sexual beings and that having sex 
is pleasurable uh, for the most part, or it's supposed to be. And if you need a little help, and you guys need that little blue pill, not something that, by the way, most guys say, I don't need that. But if, if you need a little help to get into that intimate area, I don't see anything wrong with it. One, and two, in the case of vaginal dryness, that could be, walking around with that has got to be, well, painful and uncomfortable in general, forgetting the sex part. That's right. And I think, you know, I think that's why, you know, uh, it's easy in some ways to sex if, you know, if it's just uncomfortable. And so, you know, there's now the whole syndrome has been labeled as urinary atrophy, when before it was just called vaginal atrophy. So in the past, it was a vaginal problem, essentially. Now they expanded it to include the urinary tract, as well as the labia and all the other surrounding tissues. So it's not just vaginal dryness now. It's being recognized as a syndrome of the whole pelvic area. And, you know, what's happening is that as we're aging, you know, beyond 70, 80, reaching our 90s even, women are having more and more pelvic problems, including prolapse, where a organ protrudes, you know, through the vaginal tract. I can remember, my my grandfather passed away, he was about 75, which by today's standards is not that old. But he died, he died of a heart attack, but he was chasing my grandmother around the bedroom. (laughs) That's great. Which I find absolutely wonderful. In fact, there's, somebody has, in the family, has a, um, a napkin or an envelope, I don't remember which, and he said, to be on 40 years of making love. And oh, I just thought beautiful. that was, isn't that beautiful? But even now, and he's been gone for over 50 years. He was a great guy. Um, people in general don't think of seniors or people even over 50 of having natural sex lives and in fact you know if i don't know if you have kids if i hug and kiss my wife my kids go ew you're too old don't do and what we are I'm the- getting weather here so i just and there it goes again From there, all right and we're okay. rolling tape go right on ahead so i have two teenage girls aged 15 and 19 so it's a very interesting time because their hormones are fluctuating but upwards Well, I'm 48, and my hormones are fluctuating, but they're fluctuating down. So I I totally relate. When when I've done some research on some of the vaginal products, I find that there are either uh, hormones in them or hormone, I'll call them enhancers, it's not the correct word, but... They, they they seem to interact with the body in a way that they weren't meant to. And you don't Absolutely. have that in your products. Absolutely. I'm very um I'm very sensitive to toxins in my environment, both personally and professionally, and it really is the philosophy behind uh, Demiva and the reason being is that the vaginal membrane in particular is the most sensitive membrane in our body and so you know the products that exist currently have you know phthalates which are endocrine endocrine disruptors they have parabens and so you know essentially we really want to be putting uh you know using products that are very clean and non-toxic and um, and unfortunately, you know, as you said, a lot of the products that exist have either hormones or toxic chemicals that will disrupt our hormones. And I've we've read studies and and of course talked about it here on Late Night Health about how some hormone disruptors may be causing early onset puberty in women. And puberty cancer. Wow. It's amazing. 
Well, we want to talk about more about uh, Demiva uh, and some of the products, we, we, so that we can we can share this information with our audience. Uh, you've got some very clever names of your products, May and Cleo. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, May West and uh, Cleopatra. That's right. Our inspirations. Our inspirations. Uh, uh, two of the uh, one woman of the twentieth century, and I don't even know where Cleopatra fits in. You know, uh, probably well, she was the BC. last uh, Egyptian ruler, and um, we especially um, you know love her because uh, she was a scientist, which no one knows. Was she really? Mm-hmm. Wow, beauty and brains. That's right, and she invented lip balm and um because so our labial cream we named after her because we call it a uh, lip balm for your other lips <laughs> okay um and see i'm a little uncomfortable with that isn't that he, what, he's at a loss for words finally finally wow. five and a half years you finally yeah. did it you knocked him back <laughs> on his heels just like that I'm proud. or on my I'm tush proud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What is the difference between, and what would be the use of of Cleo, for example? Is, would that be primarily for sex? No, in fact, it's actually not for sex. And um, so if you think about the products that uh, are on the shelf, lubricants and condoms, they're made essentially for men. And so they're made for easier intercourse for men. And so the way I describe our products is that they're made by women for women. And so our products are for overall health and moisture, uh, in particular for two areas, the vaginal tract, which is May, and Cleo is for the labial skin. And so, you know, May is really meant to moisturize, keep the internal tract healthy, just like we put on a moisturizer at night, maybe an eye moisturizer, face moisturizer, we should be moisturizing vaginally. And if you, you know, just because we're aging better on the outside doesn't necessarily mean we're aging better on the inside. And in fact, quite the opposite for a lot of women. And so labial dryness is something that I didn't even really know about until my customers started asking me to uh, melt the product, melt the May suppository, and that's not so easy to melt. And so I finally got up the courage after speaking to a couple of dozen women to ask them what the issue was. And it turned out it's labial dryness. So the external skin mm -hmm. also becomes dry over time. Uh, we're going to take a time out. We'll come back and spend some more time uh, with uh, our guest, Chacha Sun from Damiba. And we're talking about May and Clio uh, products for women uh, to uh, for, for better vaginal health. Uh, I'm Mark Allen. This is Late Night Health, uh, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. We will be back. Uh, visit us at LateNightHealth.com, LateNightHealth.com. If you or someone you love suffers from drug addiction, now is the time to utilize your private health insurance PPO plan. If eligible, receive up to $30,000 or more in substance abuse benefits with low or no out-of-pocket cost. We are the National Treatment Network, the premier drug and alcohol treatment referral service operating 24-7. We help connect you with facilities nationwide that accepts PPO private health insurance for substance abuse. If you have PPO substance abuse coverage and you need immediate admittance to a medical detox or residential rehab treatment center, call us now. Call our live referral helpline today. The call is free. This program is not available to Medicare or Medicaid customers. Call 800-296-1252. 800-296-1252. 800-296-1252. 
That's 800-296-1252. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The tax doctor is here to help you negotiate a lower tax bill. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts. But you can stop these IRS actions. The tax doctor will fight for you using industry secrets that can stop any IRS actions, eliminate penalties and interest, and reduce your past tax bill. So you pay the IRS less. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, call the tax doctor now for a free IRS audit emergency review. 800-663-5107. 800-663-5107. 800-663-5107. That's 800-663-5107. 